the County Capacity Club show. How's it going? Coming to you live from allpointstv.com, or it might be recorded. I'm not really sure. But, um, hey, if you want to call into the show, right now is the time to do it. It's 248-247-5846. Call in. Uh, we've got John behind the cam right here at allpointstv.com. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm, over here. I'm over, over here, there. man. Yeah, he's All over right. there. I got to keep reminding. We got two cameras, but all right. yep, he's over there. Um, man, it's good to be back here at All Points TV. I just I got to point this out because when I came into the studio today, uh, we got it going on here. We got a jam packed party going on. But um, it, obviously, here in Flint, you guys got a new mayor elect, Ms. Uh, Karen Weaver. So congratulations to her. I do want to point out that I'm sitting in the mayor elect's chair. <laughs> she was here. At All Points TV, I think she's been here like what, John? Three times now? Two, three times? Oh yeah, it's like I'm, I'm here. Sorry, just sorry, like, sorry. We got people in the uh, booth with me. Yes, so. yes. Busy studio. Yeah, it is. Back to back shows today. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, Mayor elect Karen Weaver. She's in the studio. Been here, so you can look up uh, former podcast if you want to see more about her. Uh, more candid type stuff that you're not going to catch on like in local uh, <laughs> news channels, you know. But uh, yeah, check it out. AllPointsTV.com. Look up our channel as well, Genesee County Compassion Club. But, um, hey, wanted to talk to you today about medical marijuana. There's a lot going on. Obviously, like I just mentioned, we had the elections going on yesterday. There's some news that I want to share with you. But before we get to that, I want to cover what's happening down at the Genesee County Compassion Club. We had an awesome time this last weekend at Out Duberfest. It was our first annual Out Duberfest. We held it on October 31st. It was fantastic. Had a Halloween costume party. I hear some of the costumes uh, lasted longer than we wanted them to, but uh, at any rate, the costumes were fantastic. We did have some uh, prizes given away. We also had the, the longest, the best uh, from the Outdoor Grows, so I want to say uh, congratulations to the winners, and also uh, thanks for participating. It's good to have this kind of stuff. It's good to see what each other's doing and talk about the Outdoor Grows. We've talked a lot of them, talked a lot about them. Uh, on the previous episodes and just how this year has just really been something spectacular, something unique as far as the quality that we've seen from the outdoor products that are being done by patients and caregivers here in Michigan. It's truly phenomenal what can happen when you uh, just let the sun do its job. But um, anyway, it was an awesome time at the, at the festival there. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, we'll be looking forward to having more awesome times at the G3C in the future come. But uh, grab a t-shirt. They're still around if you want. These things are sweet. We got the smoking griffin on them. I think you guys can see it now. Check that out. It's got a doobie. Of course. But, uh, yeah. Um, no, it's sweet. I'm, I'm glad you guys could come down and, and enjoy it. Uh, all right, let's talk about other upcoming events. We do have the soup kitchen. If you guys would like to sign up, you can check that out at the snack bar over at the security station or over at the Ed Center. We'd love to get you signed up to serve during the holidays. Uh, we're going to be doing a food drive here, so start getting your cans out of that pantry, your leftover can of corn that's been sitting there for six months. You know you're not going to eat it, but somebody will. So bring it into the club. We're going to start collecting these food items for the local soup kitchen. Uh, and, of course, we always work with, like I said, the North End Soup ki Kitchen. Sorry, getting some feedback here. North End Soup Kitchen here, the Catholic Charities in Flint. Um, we'll be having that, and uh, we'd like you to help out if you can. So... Let's see, what else we got going on? Obviously, like I mentioned, we had the elections yesterday. So in the news, talking about, uh, first thing I want to mention is like, you know, can anybody think about anything positive that has to do with Ohio State? I can't. <laughs> uh, yes, yesterday the, the ballot proposal for uh, legal marijuana in Ohio failed. And uh, so there's a lot of talk about this. It's kind of interesting proposal. For those of you that don't know, I'll give you some of the highlights. Uh, this was a kind of a, a multi-tiered thing going on. They had a couple different proposals. So it was quite confusing to a lot of the voters, you know, which one they should vote on or if they had to vote on both and so on and so forth. But ultimately what they had in front of them was a proposal to allow marijuana for recreational purposes. Uh, an individual could have up to four plants in their own possession. Uh, grow their own up to four plants. Any sales or any actual commercial production would have been strictly restricted to uh, just 10 different growers that would be chosen and licensed by the state. So obviously uh, this is sort of a, a monopoly type of proposal where the Ohioans have been begging for medical marijuana for years. They've had multiple proposals submitted uh, by their public and ballot 
initiatives. They've had multiple times it's gone through in their legislative sessions in Ohio. Uh, bills that have been considered for legalizing medical marijuana. So this was the most recent. It was the biggest one. It had the most money put behind it yet. And it looked to be the most promising uh, for mar marijuana in terms of being legalized and available to people in the state of Ohio. Uh, however, it did in fact fail yesterday. And I have to ultimately believe that part of the reason it did fail in Ohio was because of the fact that it was designed around this monopoly type business scheme. Um, there's been a lot of different people that have stood up and you know recognized this. I think Willie Nelson was one of them. I think there was some other big names that stood up and said, hey, you know, we want to support marijuana legalization. We want to support no longer incriminating people for this, so on and so forth. But at the same time, we do not support a monopolization of the market uh, and this type of uh, strategy being allowed uh, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous. So I think in part the bills failed to that. I think in part they also failed due to the fact that they had some confusing language. And there was another proposal uh, on the ballot that would have uh, conflicted some of the proposals that we just talked about. So if voters had in fact voted for both of those, then they would have ultimately ended up fighting in court about which law was actually going to have precedent over the other blah, blah, blah. But I'm sure... If that had happened, money would have probably won. But in this case, money didn't win. So guys like uh, Nick Lachey, and I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it, but then I saw it and I was like, Ugh, of course. So yeah, this guy from uh, you know Hollywood or whatever, Nick Lachey, he was one of the people that had his dibs in on getting one of these 10 grow licenses in Ohio. So apparently, if you've got enough money, you can try to buy just whatever you want. And ultimately, in this case, it didn't work. Uh, the measure failed, and I'm glad it failed. Uh, I don't think that is the way that we need to have legalization done. I think that it's atrocious that we are still putting people in jail for victimist crimes like marijuana. But on the other hand, if we're going to legalize it, we need to just straight up legalize it and allow the free market to go ahead and take place in this new growing industry. So we can look at the examples that are out there. Colorado also yesterday voted on a referendum where the state... Uh, basically has collected $66 million more than they should in tax from the sale of this legalized marijuana, from the allowance of this free market that I'm talking about. And the voters decided yesterday that the state can keep the money, keep it, it's extra money, and apply it into the general fund, which will hopefully be doled out for things like roads and schools and social services, police, fire, that type of thing. So here we are. I mean, you have an example of, uh, I think, how it's working a definite positive example. It's very tough to find really any negatives being reported out of Colorado when we look at that particular type of business model. However, yet we see on the other hand, when we look at this oligarchy, this monarchy, uh, this monopoly model being proposed, like what we saw in Ohio yesterday, it is ultimately being defeated. The people do not want that. And I think hopefully that was made clear yesterday. Uh, my hope is that that can be carried on into Michigan. You know, we have the same type of uh, group. It's kind of interesting to me right now that the group that was sponsoring that type of legislation in Ohio was called Responsible Ohio. Uh, that was the name of the group. That's where the money was coming from. And that's where the big, the big money dogs were at. So now we have this group in Michigan. I think it's called the Michigan... Responsibility Council, uh, the Michigan Safety Cannabis Coalition, a couple groups like this out there that are trying to back the current medical marijuana bills that are in our Senate right now that are being currently debated. And they are a potentially a monopoly type business. I was just reading some uh, reports yesterday. I think it was reported in MLive on how some of the changes that they were talking about making to the current bills the bills right now talk about having three different types of licenses, one for 1,500, one for 1,000, and one for 500 plants. And we're talking about licenses for growing operations. So the bill currently lays that out. The rhetoric that was being mentioned in the paper yesterday alluded to the fact that potentially the growers that would be licensed for the 1,500 and above would actually not be growers that would be growing 1,500 plants. They would be growers that would be licensed to grow 75,000 plants and would be able to do so uh, within 180 days of when the bill is passed. So essentially what that would do is it would limit those licenses to be given to only places that already have the ability to produce, the capacity to produce on those mass volumes and scales. 
And obviously that is a very large commercial operation and I do not think that that type of operation is what the Michigan market is looking for. I think what they want to see is more of the artisan type, the small uh, sort of home brew or sort of uh, craft beer business that we've seen right now go on in the alcohol industry. When we're talking about recreational for marijuana in the future, I think that's what Michigan's looking for. You know, I don't think too many people are asking for us to have another Budweiser created here in Michigan uh, under the guise of marijuana. It just it doesn't benefit everyone. And I think now that it's clear, we're starting to understand, uh, you know, modern day economics and how this trickle down stuff just really doesn't work. Uh, we have to have grassroots, we have to have main street production if we're going to be able to grow this economy, if we're going to be able to continue to provide means and jobs and opportunity for the common man and not just for a rich few people. And there was an interesting article uh, posted by a writer, and I'm sorry her name is eluding me, but she made some comments in uh, uh, her post and it sort of made comparisons about how the civil rights issues are, are just being completely ignored, uh, trampled over, if you will. I mean, if you look at what prohibition has done to uh, minorities, what it's done to you know urban areas, what it's done to uh, underage people, you know, the, the impact of the incarceration, the, the felonies that are on those folks' records for those types of crimes, and we're talking about people who have been caught with marijuana. You know, we're not talking about people who were robbing a store and happened to have a bag of weed in their pocket. We're talking about folks that were, you know, simply caught with possession or for dealing. And, you know, this, this type of thing here is, has a long-term impact on someone's life, obviously. And that type of uh, policies or those types of policies, they just they don't make sense anymore. We need to have a different way of looking at this. And I think that uh, it's time that our government recognizes that we're ready for that sort of change. So hopefully here in Michigan, we'll take note of what occurred in Ohio and uh, hopefully the bills that are currently being considered in the, uh, the Senate right now, um, you know, don't go the way of the monopoly. Uh, there's some other rhetoric in the same article that I was reading that mentioned these large mega grows, if you will, that also said they wanted to allow the licenses uh, to be given out to the smaller grows, i.e. places that would grow 500 plants or less. They wanted to give a lot of those out, is what they were trying to say. But then on the other hand, they tried to say that they didn't want to have that because there'd be a proliferation of growers everywhere if you were to be uh, sort of freewheeling it with handing out these licenses to anyone and everyone that wanted one. So ultimately, I think what we're seeing right now is some pushback uh, from people that you know originally tried to write these bills we're also seeing pushback from the people that paid for these bills. Uh, and we're seeing pushback from folks in the medical marijuana community, the grassroots community, who are saying, look, these, these bills don't represent us. They're not what we're looking for. Uh, the big money guys are saying, look, the, the large grows that you're considering licensing, they're not large enough. They're not exclusive enough. We need to make sure that it's only us four or five people that get to do this, or maybe uh, only us 10. So very convoluted going on a lot of different uh, feedback so hopefully there will be time for more input from people you know other than just the folks that are getting paid to push these bills through you know what i mean so we'll see but uh that's what happened in ohio and like i said i hope that's what happens here in michigan i hope people are strong enough to stand up and say look yeah we do we do need to move forward but we need to make sure that we're moving it forward for the better of all of us and not just a few so we'll see how that occurs and of course, we'll keep you posted. I did hear that there will be renewed Senate hearings next week uh, for Senator Rick Jones. He's the chairman of the committee that will be reviewing those bills that I just mentioned. We're talking about, the, of course, the House Bill 4209 and the accompanying bill, I think it's 4289. These are the bills that are licensing or potentially licensing distribution centers along with transport companies, licensing uh, for testing facilities, licensing for growing centers and for processing centers. So it's quite an extensive bill. And it's also tried to, like I said, the other bill, which is uh, providing for a tracking system. So this is a pretty massive infrastructure that they're trying to implement here on the medical marijuana system in Michigan. And I think we need to take a look at that in itself and consider the implications of the economics behind that. Do we really need to have another 150 state employees for the 125,000 folks out there that have medical marijuana cards in Michigan. It seems to be excessive, and I also don't think that the, uh, the current program 
is able to support that type of infrastructure. I think that's just going to be too cumbersome. And I think right now when we're seeing a surplus in the state budget from the fees that are collected on medical marijuana patients and caregivers, I think we would see that surplus change into a deficit uh, very quickly if we had to you know, pay for all those additional employees at the Department of Lara, pay for the additional state police employees, pay for a licensing board, pay for, I mean, it goes on and on and on. So this would be very extensive if it were to pass. I think it's very unnecessary when you look at the actual number of people that are participating in the program. Um, again, if this was built around a recreational law, then I think it would be appropriate and I think it's something that Michigan would embrace. I think that's what we probably should do. Take this whole package, take it out of the medical marijuana law, leave the current medical marijuana law exactly where it is, don't touch it. Change the current proposed bills into an option for full legalization for adults 21 and over, and I think you'd have something that would be uh, sponsored by a lot of people. Um, so, but anyways, that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm off the wall here, but at any rate, that's where we're at. So stay posted because next week, like I said, there will be renewed hearings. Any information that comes up on these bills, I'll be sure to tell you guys about it and keep you guys in tune. Uh, I also want to mention the MI legalized petitions. They are still gathering signatures. I believe they have, uh, mm, I might be getting this wrong, but four to six weeks left to gather signatures. So they are uh, obviously getting to the end of their time period. So the, if they're gonna get this through, if you wanna see that on the ballot, uh, now's the time to get involved and, and get active with that because that's, that's something there. I do think that's a good petition. Um, I know I haven't really given my personal opinion on it a whole lot. As far as the club goes, I mean, we're for medical marijuana and that's, that's why we have to make sure that that's what we're concerned with. But uh, for the MI legalized thing, I think it's sponsored by good people. And I think that the folks who crafted that legislation or the proposed bill, if you will, I think they, they come from good places. It's not an oligarchy type proposal. And uh, I think that's what the most damning type of thing is in for the future of marijuana. Uh, in general. I mean, when we look at what's going to be coming down the road, we all know that marijuana is going to be legal for adult use in some time, in some way, shape, or form. The question is, is what do we do as a population and as people to ensure that it is beneficial to our society and, and to not just a few people? So, all right, I'll end on that note. I want to say thanks again for joining me here on the Genesee County Compassion Club show. It's always a pleasure to be back at allpointstv.com. Uh, stay tuned for other posts and podcasts from allpointstv.com. Like I said, we had the mayor, Karen Weaver. She was in this office. So if you guys want to stay tuned with what's really going on, this is the place to do it. So, John, thanks for being in the studio with me. I appreciate it. Get outside and enjoy this lovely day. It's probably the last one you're going to get this year. So get some sunburn and uh, feel good. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you next week.